again it, it happened again I had an idea I sat down I started working on it uh, and I hated it I absolutely hated it second time now and you know what it's made me realize that there's a lot of things um, that I think people don't realize about YouTube especially if you're an avid watcher and you um, like a creator, for example, say um, you watch people who upload twice a day, maybe. Maybe um, maybe you watch someone who only uploads once a week. Um, still, the important thing to realize is that that's a job and that takes a lot of effort. The video was of an unboxing, another one, I know. I kind of, uh, I like unboxing, right? That's what I do like doing that. It's something that I want to keep going on the channel. Like, I like reviewing tech and gear, not just camera stuff, um, but computer stuff, games, things like that. I mean, let me know whether you'd mind me uploading game content here or whether I should just do that on Twitch and keep them separate. But I don't just want this channel, my channel, to be about cameras. I want my YouTube channel to be a connection between me and you guys. Um, and I can't have that connection if I'm pretending um, if I'm acting. There's a people there are people out there that do it really well. Peter McKinnon, for example, right? I think he's a really nice guy. I think that he's brilliant. He followed in the footsteps of people like Casey Neistat. Casey Neistat had a dream. He wanted to upload a vlog every single day. He achieved that. And then he got stuck. He's admitted it as well. He he got stuck doing YouTube and he thought, well, if I just make content people will watch it and I'll enjoy it. But sooner or later, he stopped enjoying making content for the sake of making content. That's why he's only uploaded two videos in the last month. Um, I think Peter McKinnon's similar. He, his upload schedule was erratic and it was to pump out as much content as possible. And now, a lot of his content takes place in a, in a place similar to this, in, a, in an office, in a studio. It's clear that he uploads content because he needs to, because it's his job. I'm not saying he doesn't enjoy it. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that he's lying to you. What I'm saying is that there is a clear distinction between those that t treat YouTube like a job, like they bring an attitude to it. They, they know what they've got to do. They hire editors, they hire staff, they hire writers. Linus Tech Tips, fantastic example, okay? He went from being one man editing his own videos for NCIX to being a limited company with hundreds of staff. Well, maybe not hundreds, but a lot of staff. And he only got there by treating YouTube like a job. But for me, I want to have my video production and I want to have YouTube as a place to connect with you. And when I tried doing this unboxing, and I did enjoy doing the unboxing, but the way I was doing it, the way I was, I was talking about the item, I was acting, I was pretending like it's the first time I've seen something like this before in my life. And it wasn't authentic, and I hated it. I was watching it, I was trying to edit it, trying to make a video out of it, trying to make a sequence, a story, and I absolutely hated it. I cringed half to death, and I realized it wasn't because it was badly filmed, I mean, the audio was pretty terrible because I stuck it in this shelf um, and I didn't think about the fact that you'd get lots of reverb in there, but I did, and that didn't help. But it was just that the acting and my attitude towards the video was rubbish. I, you could clearly tell that there was no actual enthusiasm in my voice. It was just, wow, look at this. That's dead. 
That's me being dead inside. It made me think about my future, it made me think about what the hell do I want? Am I cut out for this? Am I cut out for YouTube? Am I? Am I gonna fail miserably? I don't know. And, well, I don't know. And that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's exciting. Being scared is good. Not, not being good at something is good. I'm not gonna vouch and say that my content is amazing, but one person, one person did say that the quality is good. So that's something. And holding on to these good bits, holding on to the things that, that, that I like, um, when I make a video is what's going to keep me engaged with this project, this channel. People out there, you guys watching this, people out there who have a job. Some, we grow up being told to follow our dreams. And as we get older, we are expected to realize that that's what we tell our kids. We, we tell them to have dreams because it forces them to learn. And once someone's learned, they become useful and then they can get a job anywhere. And some people get a job and they're stuck there for a long time. And you hear a lot about these sort of people online because they talk about how they made a big leap to move to another country and now they're living the dream. The point is that you have to make changes. You have to, you can't force yourself to enjoy something. That's not enjoyment, that's acting. Um, Obviously, there's a right time and a right place. If you're at a wedding for someone you don't really like, you've got to pretend you're enjoying it. It's just courtesy. But when it comes to the things that you take care of, when it comes to yourself, when it comes to what you want other people to see in you, there's no point lying to them. They'll see it, and you'll see it. If I uploaded that video, if I finished it, if I'd uploaded it, and I put it on YouTube, I would know that I acted in it, and I would be upset. People might not know. People might not even realize. I'm pretty sure they would. I'm not the best, but I would be upset. I think that's what this YouTube burnout thing is because burnout is normal. It's, it happens every time. I mean, you can marry someone and you have relationship burnout. It's very normal. Um, the point is that you make sacrifices, you push through it, you change things up, you refresh your relationship with your loved ones. And I think just like work, you could refresh your relationship with work. Um, but people who say they get YouTube burnout is because they do the same thing over and over again and they force themselves to do the same thing over and over again, over and over again because they're afraid of change. They're afraid of the viewers. They're afraid, well, they're not afraid of literal viewers. They're afraid of their viewership dropping. They're afraid of negative feedback, negative comments. Luckily, I'm small. I don't have those fears. People, if people leave, it's not like they were making up a huge chunk of my audience anyway. I don't have a, I don't think I have a stable audience of people that re-watch my videos all the time. I haven't got enough content to re-watch anyway. I'm going to stop, not YouTube, not, not ever. I want to keep this up, but I'm going to stop pretending. I'm going to stop caring about what my viewership is. I'm going to stop caring about my image. Not literally, I mean, I think I look pretty good today, but that's because the lighting's nice. No, I'm going to stop caring about whether or not I make a video that's, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes long, whether or not it's catchy and going to get loads of views. I'm going to upload content that I would like to upload or I'd like to watch. I'm going to upload things that interest me. I'm going to keep doing unboxings. I'm going to keep doing things like this. I'm going to do more photography stuff. It's weird to have something that you love, something that you want to do, but you can't do because you need to do other things, things that you also love. Um, I, I spent the Friday night, this past Friday night, Good Friday, in a nightclub slash cocktail bar. I was asked if I could shoot on Thursday. I said, hell yeah, I can shoot. I, I couldn't at the time, I had to go to Amazon and buy things for next day delivery. And I got it done. I went there, I had fun, I did something. And that's what made me realize that just doing things that you enjoy is more important than doing things for the sake of doing them. Um, it wasn't a financially strong investment to go shoot um, 
in a nightclub because I don't have the equipment, I had to buy it. So technically I would be like a couple grand in debt. I basically, without trying to beat around the bush, I'm just trying to say that if you're a creator, it doesn't matter if you're on YouTube, Twitch, whatever, don't think that burnout is scary. Don't think that it's something unique to people who've been doing it for years. Burnout happens all the time. If you eat the same meal every day, you're gonna get bored of it. Um, it's just natural. It's what happens. And so I'm gonna upload content when I want about the things I want. I'm not gonna try and follow any trend. Um, I'm not gonna try and become a channel based on one certain thing. Although there are obviously avenues I'm gonna to stick to, camera gear, computing stuff, things like that. On technology in general, I'm not gonna start becoming a a fitness channel. I don't go to the gym or anything. Not yet, hopefully, but no, I'm too lazy. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have anything that you wanna say, just leave it down in the comments below. And like I said, if you have feedback for my channel, I wanna hear it, bad or good. Criticism is something I use to work with. Um, for example, I'm going to go on a tangent again, but for example, I think part one of my 7200 review, someone left a comment saying that they didn't find it useful, and I agree. The first part wasn't useful. I uploaded it because I wanted to let people know that I was going to review the lens. It's a video I wanted to make because I was excited about reviewing the lens. And then in the second part, I gave a more detailed descriptive review of that lens. So if you haven't watched it, please go ahead and watch it. Anyway, again. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.